More often than not, in your data analysis uh, quests, you will need to iterate or repeatedly perform an action on pieces of data systematically. This is where a for loop comes in handy. So let's write a function that quickly demonstrates how for loops work. We won't take any parameters. We'll just have a simple function. So to start a for loop, you simply write for. Um, but right now, I'm going to take a moment to show you how to get documentation and help for different functions and operations in Igor. So if we highlight for, right click it, and click help, uh, we're brought to the documentation for for loops. And so you can see the generic uh, syntax of a for loop uh, right here. It consists of the start statement, the end statement, and the body of the for loop, uh, which contains the code that's going to execute each iteration. The initialized statement is basically a line of code that runs at the very beginning of your for, of your for loop. And usually, more often than not, you're initializing a variable to zero or something like that. Uh, because you're going to have an index that tells you where you are in the loop and you want to initialize it as zero. The continue test is a conditional expression which evaluates to either true or false and accordingly uh, the loop will continue depending on this if this evaluates to true or not. So this is usually, well this is a uh, usually something like index is less than five or index is equal to some number. Uh, and when, when that value is no longer true, uh, the for loop stops, does not run, and skips to the next piece of code after the for loop. Finally, the update portion is what happens at the end of each iteration. So usually you're going to increment an index at the end of each iteration. So might seem a little confusing at first, but let's just write one and it will become clear. First, let's make a variable int index of my loop. And then we will write the loop. Let's initialize our index at zero. So we start at zero. The conditional uh, expression that we'll use to see if we should continue or not will be whether or not index of my loop is less than 10. So as long as this portion is true right here, the for loop will continue to run. At the end of each iteration, let's add one to our index. And four ends the for loop. And let's just print the index. And give it a shot. Looks like I forgot to clear my history. You can see I tested this out beforehand. And it proceeds as expected. So our for loop executed 10 times. Each time the increment index of my loop was uh, incremented by one, and we started at zero. And so you can see that when index of my loop became um, equal to 10, our for loop stopped running. So we never print out 10. Let's make a nested for loop to illustrate how things get very complicated very quickly. And I'm going to change this variable name to index of my inner loop, or outer loop rather. I'm going to make another index for the inner loop. And why not explore a little bit about the print statements? So we'll say the index of the outer loop is. And here, this is not going to compile right, so if we hit compile, that won't compile because we're trying to combine two type, two variable types, and Igor doesn't like that. So we're trying to print out a string, um, 
if you give print uh, an integer or a, a floating point number, a decimal point number, it'll be fine. But as soon as you start including a string character, such as the sentence we have here, uh, it doesn't know how to concatenate a, a number with a string of text. So we need to convert this variable into a string using the num to string function or num to sr, str. And this way, uh, we're now concatenating two strings, which is an allowed operation. And the code compiles. And so let's write our inner for loop, initializing our inner loop variable to zero. And we'll only run the inner loop uh, twice. Take a minute to note how I wrote the um, update condition in this for loop versus the previous one. You can use the double plus sign operator to increment a value. So basically just means add one to this value. And it saves us a little bit of time. Looks like we just got a simple lack of parentheses that is fixed with a parentheses. Now it compiles, and let's try it once more. So that's a lot of text. All right, so let's just look at the first few lines and digest this. So this is one complete run through the outer loop. So we say the index of the outer loop is zero, and then we run through the inner loop, going from zero to one, and we bounce back out to the outer loop, zero to one in the inner loop, and so on. And so, Perhaps a bit abstract as an example, but maybe you can see how this is very, very useful for uh, performing systematic operations on large sets of data. So mess around with it. Um, remember that you can do anything you could normally do in Igor code in a for loop. Uh, so you can make figures iteratively. If you wanted to make a series of figures, you could do it that way.